Hello, everyone, and welcome. We're going to get started in about a minute or two. Just want to point you out to the um, session needs. So for this event, you're going to need just a comfortable place to sit. Hopefully, you're already there. Um, a piece of paper of any kind is fine. Um, and something to write or draw with. So any materials that you have, that is totally fine. And we'll get started in, in about a minute. So for anyone who just joined in the last few seconds, just repeating again, um, there are some session needs. So feel free to uh, grab these right away. So you're just gonna need a comfortable place to sit at. Hopefully you're there. Um, a paper of any kind and something to write and draw with. And we're gonna get started in a few seconds here. Alrighty, it's 12.02, so let's just get this party started. <laughs> Hi, my name is Tanya Espinosa Bonilla. I'm the Art Across Curriculum Educator at the Haggerty Museum of Art, um, and I'm joined by my colleague and supervisor, Christine Fleming. You want to say hi, Christine? Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I am the Manager of Community Engagement at the Haggerty Museum of Art, and Tanya and I are going to be kind of tag teaming this session. So if we wanna head to the next slide, we can start off with our land acknowledgement. So we have been featuring a different land acknowledgement for each of these sessions. This is actually the last session. So if you've missed any, spoiler alert, you can go to the Hagerty YouTube channel to check them out. And today we're gonna be featuring kind of a, a longer land acknowledgement. This is from Historic Milwaukee, but I think it has some really great information. Um, while I'm reading, feel free to drop in the chat, I know, Land acknowledgement is an odd thing to do for a virtual program, but we are from the Hagerty Museum, which is placed in Milwaukee in a specific area of land with a specific history. So in the chat, if you wanna drop in where you are joining us from while I read this land acknowledgement, please do. Again, this is historic Milwaukee. Milwaukee has long been known as a gathering place. The confluence of three rivers emptying into Lake Michigan are seen today as a benefit for residents to enjoy. But in reality, they have long nourished and been nourished by generation upon generation of indigenous people. Historic Milwaukee would like to respectfully acknowledge the Bad River Band of Lake Superior Chippewa, the Forest County uh, Potawatomi, the Ho-Chunk Nation, the Lac Court Oriel Band of the Lake Superior Chippewa, the Lac du Flambeau uh, Band, sorry if I butcher any of these names, I've been practicing, but not my, not my <laughs> native language, uh, Band of Lake Superior Chippewa, the Menominee Tribe of Wisconsin, the Oneida Tribe of Indians of Wisconsin, the Red Cliff Band of Lake Superior Chippewa, the St. Croix Chippewa, Chippewa the, so the Socogon, Chippewa and the Stockbridge Munsi Band of Mohican Indians and others who are the past, present, and future stewards of this land. We pay respect to their elders, past and present. As you explore Milwaukee, we ask that you also learn more about the legacies of violence, displacement, disposition, migration, and trauma that have been created, uh, that have created the landscape we see today. Over uncovering these truths and committing them to our collective memory is but the first step of fully understanding the past. We invite you to explore resources and encourage you to begin an exploration of the full history of Milwaukee. And if you've not been to the Historic Milwaukee website, I highly recommend I can drop a link in the chat when we go to the next section. They've got lots of resources to learn a little bit more. So um, I wanted to acknowledge their great um, construction of that land acknowledgement. And we can go to the next slide. Thank you so much for that land acknowledgement, Christine. Um, so we wanted to um, kind of kick off the event by um, defining the, the theme for this event, right? So this Mindful Moments with Art is mainly focused on 
being present and we hear that phrase a lot. So I wanted to highlight kind of what that means. So if we can go to the next slide. So this definition of being present was actually, I found from a practice, a counseling practice in New York. Um, and I thought it was very encompassing of what being present is. So here it is. Uh, being present means being fully conscious of the moment and free from the noise of internal dialogue. It's often associated with feelings of stillness and peace. Sensations often seem sharper. Those who inhabit this present state frequently report a sense of experiencing life as it really is and being free from delusion. So it can show up as, you know, having less distractions, being really um, aware of your surroundings and aware of your emotions and aware of what's happening um, just in your immediate and outer environment. Um, that's the best way that we can describe that. So let's go to the next slide. So we are just going to be uh, rolling into this event right off the bat with a little mindfulness exercise. We're going to be doing a grounding exercise and it's, it's not quite a meditation. It, it, it is, but it's mostly um, a set of affirmations that will just kind of help us get started today. So if we can go to the next slide. All right. I'm going to read off these, um, these affirmations for you all. So please feel free to um, go to your comfortable spot to sit in if you're not already there. Um, sit up with your back straight and your um, feet on the ground, firmly on the ground if you can, if you're able. And we'll just go ahead and get started with this. <clears throat> so with your eyes closed, bring yourself to a place of stillness. Straighten your back and feel every worry, anger, or fear fly away from you as you find your peace. When, you mind, when your mind has cleared and all around you is silent, repeat the following to yourself. I am alive. I am present. I am safe. And if you only thought these or whispered these the first time, now try saying them out loud. Make sure that you're muted if you don't want anyone else to hear it. I am alive. I am present. I am safe. And one last time, louder this time and more assertive. Believe in what you are saying. I am alive. I am present. I am safe. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes back up and come back to this moment and we'll continue with our program. Fabulous. Thank you, Tanya. We can go to the next slide. That was very relaxing and the perfect segue for our next portion. Before we dive in and learn um, a few more techniques and make some art and do some other exciting things, we're going to spend a little bit of time learning about the artist and the artwork that we've chosen for our focus artwork for the theme for today. So we'll be exploring a few key concepts that are tied to this theme of for our session of being present and focusing on an artwork made by Robert Rauschenberg and the concepts we'll explore are these kind of three main points which are artists making art in relation to their historical time period and the society that they live in being focused on the present as an artist and also facing hardships and demonstrating resiliency which is something we see artists do time and time again so if we want to go to the next slide we'll be able to see our focus artwork, which is titled Ape, made in 1970 by Robert Rauschenberg. Um, the artist Rauschenberg created paintings, photography, prints, and assemblage sculptures, so sculptures made with found materials. Um, and we'll be looking at a few more prints a little bit later on. 
but most of the artwork that we're going to be looking at today are lithographs like this print here. Um, and he has some very interesting quotes, as do many artists that are more contemporary. He lived between 1925 and 2008, as you can see on a, the credit line. So we've got lots of interviews and great quotes from him, but he describes the process of coming to terms or shifting his thought about lithography. He said, I began lithography reluctantly, thinking the second half of the 20th century was no time to start writing on rocks. This biased idea was soon consumed in the concentration any unfamiliar art medium requires. Lack of preconception and recognition of the unique possibilities in working on stone, not paper or canvas, suggested that the approach acknowledge this. So I just love that quote of thinking through being present, giving a material or an art media a chance and, and going with it. We'll take a closer look at this print is quite large. You can see it's 46 by 33 inches and we'll be zooming in a little bit later on. But I'm gonna have us go to the next screen or the next slide so we can see a photograph. Um, Rauschenberg was born in Texas and he served in the US Navy before starting studying arts um, it, at multiple institutions, including the Kansas City Art Institute, the Académie Julian in Paris, and the Black Mountain College in North Carolina. So pretty disparate areas. After studying in those different places, he moved to New York City at the age of 24 in 1949. And you can see two different photographs of him, one taken by the artist Irving Penn just a few years before he passed away. Um, and the other is a self-portrait that he made. And there's an interesting quote, Irving Penn took many, many photographs of many artists, but uh, there was a, an, a visual editor at the New Yorker who was close with him and wrote about Penn's reflection of taking this photograph of Rauschenberg. And he said that Mr. Penn loved photographing the great painters and was delighted to be asked to do this portrait of Rauschenberg. By this time, he was a very, very well-known artist. So it's interesting to see him as an, an older artist, having learned all of the lessons that he did throughout his art making. The other photograph is a self-portrait um, when he was just 27. So he would have been done with art school. He would have been living in New York City. And it's a really interesting double negative exposure. And I don't know, you can drop in the chat if you have any photography experience. There's kind of two ways to do a double negative. You can either within the camera uh, rewind the film after you've taken one picture and then actually take the next picture on top of that negative. Um, or you can stack two negatives together and then print in the dark room. And we, many artists secrets, I'm not sure which he did with this. Um, the rewinding of the film is the more traditional approach. Um, but you can see his style and the sort of mixing of multiple Im imagery plays into the series of prints that we're going to look at. So if we go to the next slide. Oh, nice. Tanya's done the rewinding of film. It's really fun. It's a very experimental <laughs> approach, but it is you get some really interesting effects. Um, so if, spoiler alert, the print that we're looking at is part of a series that was made after Rauschenberg was invited by NASA uh, to visit Cape Canaveral, Florida, at that time known as Cape Kennedy, to witness the launch of the Apollo 11 mission. And the NASA art program actually invited multiple artists to come and they were given full access, unrestricted access, which sounds scary for a bunch of artists running around NASA, uh, to roam the buildings, the landscape. He was able to meet with astronauts and other NASA personnel. And they were granted all of this access to commemorate this huge momentous event in their artwork. Um, and on this slide, you can see all sorts of key details about the launch. I was not quite alive yet, but I'm curious for those who are on the call with us, if you have any memories of this day, if you remember watching it, you can either unmute yourself and share or drop them in the chat. I'd, I'd be curious if folks remember and are willing to share. I'm super curious about that too. <laughs> I'll give it a little bit more time. And if any memories come up as, as we go on, we'll be looking at a few of the series of prints that he made kind of in reflection or after this big event. Okay, no pressure to share. If you think of anything, feel free to drop it into the chat box. Um, the experience was really profound for Rauschenberg and he came away really energized. If you think of that 
that one of those key three themes, making art in this time period with what was happening around you in society at that time in history, the Vietnam War and the so, sort of growing social unrest in the United States had, had reached an optimum level. And so he found this really re renewed sense of optimism just about America with this event. I know lots of people that were able to witness it speak of feeling this collective you know, brotherhood or sisterhood with other residents across the nation that were watching this first and even other countries watching so many countries were participating in the race to space um, to, to be the first to walk on the moon. So I think he also having been there, it really, really influenced the art making that he did. If we want to go to the next slide. The series that he did is titled Stoned Moon, and he made between 1969 and 1970, so in a pretty short window, and it's a series of 34 lithograph prints that feature hand-drawn hand passages, collaged imagery, um, and highlights all sorts of um, kind of dual purpose, the landscape that he was able to go around in Florida, um, and also the sort of industrial aesthetic that was part of the space race. So you can see in this slide, even the sort of satellites, the astronaut suit. Um, Ape, the focus artwork that we are using for this session today is just part of the series. And we actually hold 12 of the 34 prints in the series, which is quite a few. So I'm doing some interesting pairings. So feel free as we're sharing these to drop thoughts. They use a really wide color palette and I feel like are very different. I didn't realize until doing a bit more research that they were part of this series. They have very interesting titles. Here you can see Bait Hybrid Trust Zone. Um, they don't necessarily read to me at, with the titles alone or the colors or the imagery as a cohesive series, uh, but that was Rauschenberg's choice. The a fun fact, the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art has a nearly complete set in their collection. So feel free to drop observations um, between these three and we can go to the next slide to see the next collection of three prints. Awesome. And here you can really see the various amphora that he's using these like tourist maps, the orange crate from Florida. It's really interesting imagery that he's combining. Um, the, the past one, the illustration of the astronaut, and this uh, one on the far right in tilt, you can see just the outline of the astronaut. And he really wanted to, to emphasize that interconnection between nature and mankind. And he does it in a pretty interesting way. Let's see, my chat box is blinking, let me. Yeah, very varied, super varied techniques and textures and colors. We go to the next slide. And, and these, no color. These three are really interesting to me <laughs> because the, not all the series in the prints do utilize color. They're all lithography, so that writing on the stone with that kind of oil and then picking up the ink. Um, and you can, you can tell where he's using collage materials and more of like brush strokes that mix. These three in particular, I, I read as kind of cold and potentially that connection with space, it being dark. There's this sort of equipment, it's very angular and sharp. You can see a person pointing maybe as almost like the rocket going into the air. Um, there's really interesting connections to the theme that he was obviously drawing from. Okay, so he, uh, <laughs> On the collage text, so the series of prints he made kind of these two covers for, and he described the landscape of Cape Canaveral as highways built yesterday past ghost towns of technology, abandoned with the haste and impatience of emergency surgery, which I love that quote for these three in particular. Um, and then he also said, which I just love, my head said for the first time the moon was going to have company and knew it. <laughs> which this depiction of sort of an, a mixture of trepidation and wonder of just awe. And I can't imagine being on the grounds and getting to meet the people that were about to go into space. It's a lot of input for the artist to kind of process, which I think his approach of layering all these images, a little bit like that early self-portrait, really help communicate that broad range of emotions and thoughts about going to the moon. 
if we go to the next one, again, very, very different. The covers have almost typewriter text on them in addition to the imagery that um, we see in the rest of the series. And on that cover, he wrote, ideas can be cracks in the stone. And this kind of poetic attribution, a print is the window of the stone. And in fact, many of the stones that he printed, particularly in the series, um, that the prints that he was making in 1969 had physical cracks on the stone. And I can't imagine trying to print from a cracked stone, but I know many of the prints with the titles break, ghost, horn, marsh, and sack <laughs> all have cracks in them. And because he's kind of collaging almost, it can, it almost adds maybe to some of that sort of disjointed nature with the crack stone. But it's a real testament, I think, to an artist's resiliency. He spoke about sort of coming to terms with lithography. And he, in the end of his career, had made many, many, many lithography prints. Um, but I, I just think it's really interesting to think about the artist and sort of how they grapple and have to be resilient with the medium. It's not always a smooth road. <laughs> Sometimes it takes many, many trials and tribulations to get there. Any last thoughts before we move on to our next segment? I love that, Tanya. I found a face. We'll, we'll look a little closer at the print in a little bit and we might find some more things. So I'll let you take it away for our next section. Thank you. Yeah, that was just kind of, um, I had seen that print before, but I hadn't noticed the actual face and like the person pointing. So I thought I'd mention that. Well, thank you for um, that portion, Christine. It was a really good segue into our next um, exercise here. I, I think about um, Rauschenberg and I, I think about what you said and just keeping in mind like presence, right, being present, I think he really did a good job of um, acknowledging what was going on, going or um, like happening in his surrounding in terms of society and science and the time that he was living in. And he did a good job of like incorporating that into his art. So um, for our next um, exercise, we're going to be doing a mindfulness meditation. So if anyone is familiar with this, we're doing a body scan. Um, we did one in our very first program for Mindful Moments with Art, but we did a very short one. This time we're gonna go more in depth. Um, the purpose of the body scan is kind of to tune in with yourself and be able to notice things that are happening within yourself that you might not have noticed if you didn't take the time to. Um, and this is really helpful for being present because <laughs> we are in our bodies 100% of the time. So therefore it's really important to check in with ourselves and kind of see what's going on. So if we can go to the next slide, please. And we can go ahead and press play. Begin by making yourself comfortable. Sit in a chair and allow your back to be straight but not stiff with your feet on the ground. You could also do this practice standing or if you prefer, you can lie down and have your head supported. Your hands could be resting gently in your lap or at your side. Allow your eyes to close or to remain open with a soft gaze. Take several long, slow, deep breaths Breathing in fully and exhaling slowly. Breathe in through your nose and out through your nose or mouth. Feel your stomach expand on an inhale and relax and let go as you exhale. Begin to let go of noises around you. Begin to shift your attention from outside to inside yourself. If you're distracted by sounds in the room, simply notice this and bring your focus back to your breathing. Now slowly bring your attention down to your feet. Begin observing sensations in your feet. You might want to wiggle your toes a little, feeling your toes against your socks or shoes. Just notice without judgment. 
You might imagine sending your breath down to your feet as if the breath is traveling through your nose to the lungs and through the abdomen, all the way down to your feet. And then back up again, out through your nose and lungs. Perhaps you don't feel anything at all. That is fine too. Just allow yourself to feel the sensations of not feeling anything. When you are ready, allow your feet to dissolve in your mind's eye and move your attention up to your ankles, calves, knees, and thighs. Observe the sensations you are experiencing throughout your legs. Breathe into and breathe out of the legs. If your mind begins to wander during this exercise, gently notice this without judgment and bring your mind back to noticing the sensations in your legs. If you notice any discomfort, pain, or stiffness, don't judge this. Just simply notice it. Observe how all the sensations rise and fall, shift and change moment to moment. Notice how no sensation is permanent. Just observe and allow the sensations to be in the moment, just as they are. Breathe into and out from the legs. On the next out breath, Allow the legs to dissolve in your mind and move to the sensations in your lower back and pelvis, softening and releasing as you breathe in and out. Slowly move your attention up to your mid back and upper back. Become curious about the sensations here. You may become aware of sensations in the muscle, temperature, or points of contact with furniture or the bed. With each out breath, you may let go of tension you are carrying. And then very gently shift your focus to your stomach and all the internal organs here. Perhaps you notice the feeling of clothing, the process of digestion or the belly rising or falling with each breath. If you notice opinions arising about these areas, gently let these go and return to noticing sensations. As you continue to breathe, bring your awareness to the chest and heart region and just notice your heartbeat. Observe how the chest rises during the inhale and how the chest falls during the exhale. See if you can channel your breathing into and out of this area as if you are breathing into and out from your hands. If your mind wanders, gently bring it back to the sensations in your hands. And then on the next out breath, shift the focus and bring your awareness up into your arms. Observe the sensations or lack of sensations that may be occurring there. You might notice some difference between the left arm and the right arm. No need to judge this. As you exhale, you may experience the arms soften and release tensions. Continue to breathe and shift focus to the neck, shoulder, and throat region. This is an area where we often have tension. Be with the sensations here. It could be tightness, rigidity, or holding. You may notice the shoulders moving along with the breath. Let go of any thoughts or stories you are telling about this area. As you breathe, you may feel tension rolling off your shoulders. On the next out breath, shift your focus and direct your attention to the scalp, the head, and face. Observe all the sensations occurring there. Notice the movement of the air as you breathe into 
or out of the nostrils or mouth. As you exhale, you might notice the softening of any tension you may be holding. And now, let your attention to expand out to include the entire body as a whole. Bring into your awareness the top of your head down to the bottom of your toes. Feel the gentle rhythm of the breath as it moves through the body. As you come to the end of this practice, take a full, deep breath, taking in all the energy of this practice. Exhale fully. And when you are ready, slowly open your eyes and return to your attention to the present moment as you become fully alert and awake. Consider setting the intention that this practice of building awareness will benefit everyone you come in contact with today. I hope that was helpful <laughs> to some of you or all of you, hopefully. Um, we can go to the next slide. Begin. Okay, so for the next portion of this event, we're gonna be creating some art and we're going to be kind of reflecting on the meditation that we just did. So if we can go to the next slide, please. Um, so we are going to be creating like a physical body scan. So we're, we're just going to be depicting in whatever way, shape or form that um, looks like to you or you are willing to express with um, whatever art materials you have. So please depict whatever spots you noticed the most. Um, maybe they were problem areas or maybe they were really good areas. Maybe you felt like, wow, this part of my body feels really good today. Um, and where on body did you feel them? So what did they look like? So what I suggest is on whatever paper you have, you can either draw an outline of yourself or if you're a little hesitant to do an outline, you can always do a stick figure. That's totally fine. Um, if you don't want to try to do the body, um, draw the body, you can just do like what the actual sensation felt like. So I might do um, a representation of both, one with the body outline and one without. So just so you get some ideas, I'm going to be tilting my um, computer screen a little bit down so that the camera will be facing my um, my surface here and you can see me doing art. And while we create, um, we're going to be having a little bit of relaxing music so hopefully it'll get you into the mood of making let's say let's take about i don't know eight eight minutes or so six to eight minutes um maybe a little more if we're feeling ambitious um so let's go ahead and get started so you can press play on the music please thank you
let's take about two to three more minutes to wrap up. We could stop the uh, music for a sec. Thank you. All right, so I'm just gonna um, show my um, two kind of two artworks that I made in um, response to the meditation, and then I invite you all to um, either um, share in the chat kind of what you did, or if you're feeling up to it, you can always um, turn your video on and show us your artwork too. So I kind of did two different kinds. Um, one with the um, kind of person outline and then one just with like my art response or like my, the, the spots that I noticed in my body, what I thought that might look like. Um, so yeah, here, here it is. And um, I invite you all to show us your artworks too. We can all just kind of hold it up to the screen if you can. Yay, Christine. I'll turn my background. The background is always it. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for showing us. Oh, yeah, lots, lots of, of on that. I started with my shoulders. It's interesting. I have a new puppy. So my like interrupted sleep <laughs> mixed with all the different parts of my body that are uh, up and moving. <laughs> Thank you, Mary D. Um, let's see if I can see more people's. I invite everyone to share if you want. If not, please feel free to um, share in the chat whatever came up for you, or if you want to describe your artwork to us, anything goes. Just give it a minute and give you all my teacher stare. All right, we can keep going. So if we can go to the next slide. All right, so for this next portion, um, we're going to be taking a closer look at the um, Rauschenberg um, artwork that we saw earlier today that is kind of like the, uh, the main focus for today's event. Um, and then we're going to be um, showing it kind of cl up close and moving around in the artwork, so to speak, as best as we can virtually. Um, while we do that, I'm going to be asking you all some questions, and they're kind of rhetoric questions, right? They don't necessarily need to have an answer, but we would like to hear what you have to say. So as I 
ask the questions, you can feel free to answer them via the chat, or if you're feeling brave, you can unmute yourself, but we're gonna be monitoring the chat as I ask those questions and as, I, um, as we explore this artwork up close. So feel free to put in all your comments, maybe you can answer with a question, whatever you think works best. So here we go. I'm just gonna pull up those questions real quick. All right, we're all good to go. So, what do you first notice when you see this piece? Which colors do you notice? Orange, the color red. What shapes, if any, do you see? What images are you able to recognize? Rachel K okay, sees circle. Tanya Atkins says men sitting together, reddish orange color, circles, arcs. What additional colors would you incorporate as the artist if you were the artist of this artwork? So what colors would you add? The dial is intriguing. What would you add or change if you were the artist of this piece? Someone said, I, Rachel said, would add blue, Mary D blue, a complimentary color. Tony Atkins, a map of some kind. Very interesting. What connections do you see in these disparate images what connections do you see in these images what direction do your eyes move around the print and what direction do your eyes move around the print the people and shapes are the connection what do you think the artist was thinking when they made this piece? I see the fusion of science and nature. What might have the artist been thinking when they made this piece? And lastly, what emotions do you feel when you see this artwork? Awesome. Scientific advancement, passion, fervor. The artist may have been trying to get the significance of the moon landing AP, compass. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I hadn't even noticed the compass before. <laughs> Good catch. I think this also is a, a map, like a sort of a city. It almost looks like a waterway of some sort. And some of these start to look like streets to me. I don't know if anyone else is seeing that. Yeah. Like an aerial photograph. And it kind of then cr crumbles into <laughs> like natural shapes. Someone did mention it. Tanya mentioned a map of some kind. Yes. Um, quest for knowledge. Thank you, Rachel. All right. Any final thoughts about the artwork? We're going to see it <laughs> all fully. Um, you can drop it in the chat now. All right. So we're gonna um, go back to the presentation in a second. Just takes a little bit to navigate from one thing, one platform to the other. Here we go. All right, so let's go to our next slide. I'm gonna hand it over to Christine. 
Thanks. Great observations uh, from everyone. It's interesting on, on these prints because there are such highly detailed elements. It's not being able to see them in person, but in museums, you often can't get close as close as we were able to zooming in. So lots and lots to see. If we can go to the next slide. Um, with each of our sessions, we have been doing um, poem pairings. And we did our closer look, so we can go to the next slide. Perfect. So I found this poem called The First Men on the Moon by J. Patrick Lewis, and I thought it was such a, a beautiful nod to the whole theme of the artwork and the series of prints that we looked at today. So if we can go to the next slide, um, it has some beautiful rhyming. I'm not the best <laughs> reader of poetry, but I will do my best. That afternoon in mid-July, two pilgrims watched from distant space. The moon ballooning in the sky, they rose to meet it face to face. Their spidery spaceship eagle dropped down gently on the lunar sand, and when the module's engine stopped, wrapped silence fell across the land. The first man down the ladder, Neil, spoke words that we remember now. One small step, it made us feel as if we were there too somehow. When Neil planted the flag and Buzz collected lunar rocks and dust, they hopped like kangaroos because of gravity or wonderlust. A quarter million miles away, one small blue planet watched in awe, and no one who was there that day will soon forget the sight they saw. With that, we haven't done any rhyming poems for any of our sessions, so I love rhyming poetry. <laughs> and I just thought it was beautiful, the pace and thinking through each element that different visual artists writers, poets pick up on in sort of memorializing that event and their perspective of this huge thing that happened that changed the world for forever. Thank you for that poem. That was such an awesome fit for today. Um, I, I really enjoyed that poem. I'm not the best at pacing myself for reading <laughs> rhyming poems either, but I think you did a wonderful job, Christine. Thank you, Danya. Yeah, and it was written not that long ago, 2001 which oh. these large events, sometimes they inspire creative works for, for years, decades later. The, the person might have been mulling, mulling over the ideas for a little while <laughs> and finally landed on it. Um, all right, so if we can go to our next slide. We're getting to the end of our program, sad, but I um, did want to just give out a call to action. So uh, maybe a few calls to action. Number one, um, please feel free to keep practicing body scans or grounding affirmations. They're really helpful for day to day. They don't have to be as long as the one we did today. A body scan can be done very quickly. It can take 30 seconds or a minute if you want to extend a little bit more. It can go up to 30 minutes if you really find it helpful. Um, and it's really just about checking in with yourself. Um, the other call to action is to please go ahead, if you haven't already joined us for the past events or seen them, please go ahead and um, find those links. I, can we um, drop them in the chat as well? I'm not sure if we can do that, but um, please feel free to check those out. We have some three other mindful moments with art that have been really um, interesting and fun and all discuss different themes around mindfulness. So I really encourage you to do that. Um, any final messages, Christine? Yeah, if you have not checked out our Hagerty Facebook page, this was our inaugural live on Facebook um, video. So feel free to share that link with any friends. Um, but we have been doing Mindful Mondays. So all sorts of different artworks and, and recommendations. Tanya has sourced them. I think we have um, Mindful Monday post drafted through the end of the summer. So if you're needing just a little mindful moment, uh, check out our Facebook page on every other Monday. We'll post different scans and videos and links and resources to continue. This session has been so fun for me as Tanya is very relaxing. I wish every meeting needs a Tanya to leave body scans and entry meditations. I think they would be a lot happier meetings in general. So if you want some more, check out our Facebook page. Awesome. And then lastly, just we want to thank you for coming in um, and joining us for this event. Um, and yeah, we'll catch you later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If anyone has any questions, we have 
just if we have five minutes, look at our timing. It's perfect this time. And thanks to the people saying thank you. Um, if we want to go to the next slide, you can see our names again. And Tanya made some magic happen with our, some oval <laughs> uh, pictures of us. So feel free to reach out if you have questions, need recommendations to get some more mindful moments. This is the last formal session, but um, it's been getting more and more popular. So let us know. We'll be sending out a survey after, I believe, the fabulous behind the scenes team, Mary and Rachel, who have joined us for all these sessions. We're very, very thankful for them. Um, so if you'd like to see some more, let us know in that survey link that they share. Great. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. Thank you, everyone.